choose an antihypertensive wisely. So we have a guideline. We always say that guidelines are there to guide you, but you have to decide at the end of the day what is the best for your patient. So it can't be robotic. You have to individualize and share with, with that with, the, with your patient. When we talk about a young star, less than 55 and diabetes, you think about AC inhibitor or ARB, but think uh, a 30 year old female come to you, a lady come to you with hypertension and wants to uh, plan a family or start a family, will you give them this medicine? I would say no, because you know, or rather they didn't say, they expressed their wish. But you know that soon this, you can ask them that is there any plan at some point, even if you are starting then or then them with this kind of medicine, you have to tell them when you get married, when you are planning for baby, please stop this medicine or even thyroid diuretics, which, which can affect your baby and just think about something else or come to me, I will change it to something. So that is important. So if this is not tolerated CCB for all others uh, and if CCB is not tolerated, thiazide like diuretics. But when we call about CCB, the domain is much more nowadays. Nowadays, it's not only amlodipine or that group of drug we are using. This imidipine, ethnodipine, they have cardioprotective effect, renoprotective effect. And so if the patient can afford, but they are much more expensive. So when you are practicing in rural area, think of cheaper drugs. But if the patient can afford it when the rural patients can afford, think about their financial situation and negotiate. Step two, you are just adding them and making it uh, a bit more. But there is a, again, some portrait trial has come with the plan of polypill. Polypill means that one drug in India that is very common in Western world that is not that common to combine pills in a smaller dose. Why the advantage is the compliance is better because when you are buying two uh, drugs, the cost is more cost effective. And also you are taking two drugs. So you've seen only so many pills, but you are combining amlodip and telmisart and they are very happy you are taking one pill. So that is important. And, but when the num the increase in medicine is happening every time, every six months, four, uh, five months patient is coming and seeing the VP is not controlled. It is not that your responsibility or duty is just to increase the medicine. You have to check certain things. Whether the patient is checking the blood pressure properly, you have to check it yourself. Or you can think about ambulatory BP monitoring if it is available there. You have to ask them whether their compliance is good, they are taking any alternative medicine or the medicines we have discussed already, they are taking them whether you have given the maximum tolerated dose of the two drugs which you have prescribed. And then you have to think that whether we, we are gradually going towards resistant hypertension. Don't, just don't label them a resistant hypertension before you checking their compliance, you asking few questions, and you have done your best with that patient. So you're combining the three things in the uh, third step, but for someone, they still have the high blood pressure. When you're going to the fourth step, it is mandatory for you to check certain things like electrolytes, like creatinine, sodium, potassium, if the patient's on diuretic, whether you can increase the diuretic. Now, there are two types of diuretic, thiazide group and this, this group, this pyranolactic potassium sparing diuretics. But say, if you are giving spot potassium sparing diuretics and already they are on AC inhibitor or A2 receptor blocker, their potassium is on the higher side. You have added that potassium boom. So you have to be careful. Nowadays, what we do, okay, their potassium is high. So we know there are some potassium binder, give that. That's how that Paul Pharmacy started, or we call it pharmacological cascade. So one after the other drugs to cover the side effect of one drug. So be careful about it. Beta blocker, alpha blocker, when to give beta blocker, when to give alpha blocker. Say if we are uh, hearing this lecture third, 
30 years back, maybe Peter Blocker would come uh, in front. Now it has got a back state, but there are different conditions where beta blockers being used. Say somebody's pulse is quite high. So you can think about giving beta blocker to them, but be careful about asthma. Now there are uh, non-selective beta blocker and cardioselective beta blocker. Some cardioselective beta blocker does not aggravate asthma. So you can try them on these patients, but be careful, be vigilant, tell the patient if you have any problem, Come on, tell me. Say in COPD patient, an interesting article came up with using a beta blocker in a COPD patient. Now, you, we know that in advanced COPD, patient can have this uh, cardiac failure. So in this patient, using lo low dose, say 1.25 of bisoprolol, that does help. So that is why I have told it that choose your antihypertensive wisely. Alpha blocker. Alpha blocker we use very much nowadays and sometimes combined alpha and beta blocker we use in pregnancy.